YouTube, y'all, we come with Wally tried to warn you, nigga, about what? Wally, Wally was a W ass movie. I feel like Wally doesn't get like the credit it deserved. Like only because I think well, we was kids while like um we was watching. It. So now I feel like now that we're grown up, we could probably go back and rewatch it and gut gain like a whole different perspective. But welcome, new people, new subscribers. Let's go ahead and get into the. Though it's only been 15 years since its release, Damn, Wally has already 15? become a classic. With its beautiful animation, lovable characters, and sincere tone, it's no wonder that it would be such a massive success. But while people Wait, normally pick up on the environmental message of the film, Wally was warning of something else. A chilling vision of the future that's getting closer every day. Mm. With corporations taking more control of our life every day, and an AI revolution taking over the world, Tell it's me. time that we dive into how Wally tried to warn all of us. Okay. I like the movie begins with a showcase of the beauty of space, okay. but as we come to Earth, it's immediately clear that something is wrong. Mm. From orbit, Earth is surrounded by a thick layer of broken satellites and wreckage, something known as space junk. And it's not much better on the ground. The landscape is covered in mountains of trash, mm. almost indistinguishable from the husks of buildings and skyscrapers. The world has been ruined by waste and environmental collapse, with Earth being completely abandoned. There's no longer any animals or plants. The only thing left is a single robot and his pet cockroach. Yeah. This is Wally, a rusty old trash compactor on wheels that's been scratching out a living in this forgotten. And real quick, y'all would think that, oh, we make, we make movies like this, we watch movies like this, and like, oh, we would know to take care of the earth. But nigga, we don't care, bro. Nah, people be like, well, it's not gonna happen when I'm alive. It's not, bro. We, we don't care, bro. That's one thing that said, like, that's one thing that's sad about humans. We we just don't take care of what we have, bro. We always trying to gang, 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 gang. More land, more money, more bitches, more niggas, more, bro. Like, just more, just more, just more, just more. Like, I feel like, bro, life is more about giving and, like, than, than to receive, bro. Like, because, like, have y'all ever noticed the, the things that you have? Like, look, I'm looking around my room, y'all. It's PS5, the damn shoe, like the damn bed, that bed, like all oh, everything back there that y'all can see, right? Like all these things that I, I wanted at, at at one point in the time, right? I don't care about them no more. Like nigga, them damn shoes, like them uh yellow shoes right there. I, I love them shoes when I first got them. Nigga, not like they cool. Like, I still I still like them, but nigga, I don't love them as much as I did when I first got them. It just it's just like we we such um I don't know consumers, bro. Like. Sad. Wasteland. And as he trundles through the ruins of an old city, the only things left running are a sea of billboards for by and large, mm. which makes it clear that this corporation had clearly come to dominate every aspect of life on Earth, Isn't everything it? from the bank to the newspapers to the trains, all having their logo on them. From the video billboards, we're told that Earth's population is left on a pleasure cruise, leaving robots to clean up the garbage and make Earth inhabitable again. Wow. But seeing as Wally's the only one left, it does seem unlikely that the Earth will ever recover. Why make it um, well, habitable we continue, and we I just gonna mess it up? Video sponsor, World of Tanks. Oh. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me skip this um, ad real quick. Shout out to you, my boy. Shout out to you. Get to your, get to your chicken bag. But like, all I'm saying is, why, why make it habitable again if it was already habitable to begin with? We just ruined it. Right, right. It's gonna be the same thing. However, none of this thing. bothers Wally, who's been dutifully compacting trash for hundreds of years, surviving by scavenging spare parts from other broken robots and dodging dust storms. But over his centuries of labor, Wally's developed sentience and a personality. He appreciates the small things in his life, seeing beauty in the most mundane of objects. Mm. And throughout his years, he's been collecting a ton of mementos. But his most prized possession is a recording of an old love song from the 60s. Wally even feels lonely after so long on his own, rocking himself to sleep with the sound of the music in the background. He's human in every way that an AI can be. Wally's appreciation of beauty and his love for music both show that he can make the effort to enjoy something. Everything in his life is a result of hard work, mm. from his collection of valuables to the home he's created for himself. Most of the skyscrapers of trash that litter his world were probably made by him as well. Wally is motivated by what the philosopher John Stuart Mill called higher pleasure. One of the key thinkers of ethical utilitarianism, gaining pleasure and avoiding pain. Everything else in life only has value based on how much pleasure it gives you or the pain it prevents. Mm. But unlike other utilitarians, Mill divided pleasure into two different categories, lower pleasures and higher pleasures. Lower pleasures are associated with the body, like eating a cheeseburger or okay. finally getting that water out of your ear. Higher pleasures require some sort of work to appreciate or even experience, like listening oh to an God, opera or you're reading a book. Right now. Ignoring this divide leads to some weird conclusions, like if all pleasure is the same, then it's hard to argue against taking drugs and eating junk food all day. But a world where everyone believed this would eventually collapse overnight. Instead, it's clear that higher pleasures that you need to work for are inherently worth more than simple hedonism. 
They're simply of a higher quality than the kinds of pleasures that come without any work. Reading a novel, for example, is better than half watching some trash TV. Mm. Judging from the billboards and the corporate takeover of society, the people of Wally's world were only interested in quick Lower. ease of pleasure. Overexploitation of the planet to provide these pleasures have left it as a barren wasteland. Even then, after everything was destroyed, the people just left instead of working towards cleaning the world up. They left the work to the robots, although clearly that didn't work either. Wally, on the other hand, represents a simple life in pursuit of beauty wow. and other higher pleasures. And in a lot of ways, he does seem content, but he's still missing something. Or more specifically, someone. His AI sentience has made him able to appreciate how lonely he is. I'm not listening! But that's all about to change. One day as Wally's coming back home, he sees a moving red light on the ground. In a world where the only lights come from billboard holograms, it's something he's never seen before. So like a cat drawn to the laser pointer, he follows it. But as it leads him into an open arena, it becomes apparent that it's part of the guiding mechanism for a rocket landing. Luckily, Wally has some time to bury himself on the ground before he's crushed. Mm. And as he emerges from the ground, a door opens in the rocket, and a robot arm comes out to release a capsule containing a single robot. It's clearly far more advanced than Wally, and it begins scanning the environment around him. Wally is smitten instantly, but he peers out from behind a rock, and the new robot sees him move and obliterates the rock he's hiding behind. But some sort of advanced weapon. To his credit, Wally tries to introduce himself again and then nearly gets blown up. It's only after the new robot scans Wally and deems him a non-threat that it moves on to ignoring him. Wally then spends the next few days following the new robot around, trying to get his attention. It even makes a crude model out of it, but none of his attempts are pushing work. Rain, the new bro. robot's too busy scanning out to even bother with him. But when they can't find what they're looking for and get frustrated, Wally senses his movement. It's only when Wally saves Eve from a dust storm that they can actually start bonding. Once they're safely inside, Wally begins showing Eve everything he's been collecting. <laughs> She's clearly getting the same fascination and wonder that so Wally has from the objects. But it all goes wrong when Wally shows her a small plant that he found. Instantly, Eve grabs the plant and goes into some sort of lockdown, to the distress of Wally. Because finally, after centuries of waiting for companionship, this has just been stolen away from him. He tries everything he can think of to get his new friend back, but none of it works. Mm. So Wally is then left to care for Eve's catonic body. That is until the rocket comes back to reclaim her. Wally is powerless to stop it, but fearing that he'll lose her forever, he just manages to cling to the outside of the spaceship. Go. Finally, the rocket blasts through the layer of atmospheric junk and into outer space. And it's worth noting that judging by their logos, Do y'all notice that it's not just junk, bro? It's all satellites, bro. And then Elon Musk say he want to surround the, like, the Earth with satellites or something like that. This shit is crazy to me. And like, what got me was um, the, the poet or whoever he was, bro, bro said high and lower pleasures. And what I realized was Wally was doing all the high, like the, all, like all the higher pleasures, like working hard, collecting stuff and like just generally working and everybody else back, back on the ship, they get massages, they get it. Um, even, even the captain, he don't even steer. It's autopilot. Like. This is the, bro, I never realized how deep Wally is. What the? By and large, are responsible for the space junk as well. After a short journey, the spaceship and Wally are then taken aboard a much larger vessel. This the accident, crazy me. where a team of more futuristic robots work on unloading Eve and other robots like her. Mm. They notice that she's found plant life and separate her from the others, sending her further into the ship. Meanwhile, Wally manages to shake the other robots and sets out to follow her. And like a lot of other Pixar films, or maybe just movies in general, yeah. Wally and Eve might not be human, but in practice they're just stand-ins for human characters. Exactly. They show emotions in the same way, have the same specific mannerisms, and react to situations like a person with their knowledge would. But unlike Toy Story or Cars, where the human qualities of the characters are only present for the story's sake, Wally and Eve's humanity are completely plausible because they mirror the way artificial intelligence learns and how more advanced AI might actually act in the future. Mm. You see, in practice, AI learns in exactly the same way that we do, just with a few extra steps. Okay. If we're trying to teach an AI what an app was and how to identify it, it will show it millions of different pictures. The AI will then try and pick out which one is an apple, getting confirmation when it's right, and trying again when it's wrong. Babies learn the same way. Their parents will keep trying to teach them and hopefully congratulate them and cheer them when they get something right. Of Google was talking about how uh, Bart, uh, basically, we figure out that it's speaking Persian. We never showed it Persian. We have no idea what all of those instances of AI uh, that are all over the world are learning right now. That's dangerous as shit, boy. What the hell? Like you said, we don't know what they're learning right now. Huh? No, shut it down. 
shit. But I don't understand. What is AI for? I get it. Like, okay, kumbaya, kumbaya. But listen, y'all. If it's learning things we can't even comprehend, I feel like maybe it's good in the beginning. But then it could go crazy. Like, what do you mean it's learning things that we can't even keep up with or, or understand? It's teaching itself Persian. Ain't no money. Why didn't you learn Persian? We have no clue. Even though Wally may not have been designed with sentience in mind, clearly developed it by himself. With just a few imprinted directives and orders to guide him, he slowly developed a personality and emotions. Functionally, there's no clear difference between a computer silicon-based brain and our carbon-based body. There's no reason to assume that sentience and consciousness couldn't develop from a machine, especially after Wally's hundreds of years of life. And today, we are quite literally on the precipice of this reality. ChatGPT is just one part of a brain with a singular ability to predict the next word and form a sentence. As each of these different strands of artificial intelligence are created, we get one step closer to general intelligence, capable of the same judgments that we make every day, combining all different AIs to reach singularity. And who knows what happens then, when all AI of the world is connected together, excelling in every function that it was designed for, this will make AI unstoppable. And the only difference with AI judgments, compared to humans, will be that it's far more intelligent than us, and will have the potential to make itself far more intelligent later on. An AI that's aware of itself that can actively make itself smarter, this is what's known as the singularity. Singularity in physics is when uh, when an event horizon covers what's behind it to the point where you cannot make sure that what's behind it is similar to what you know. Just like the central singularity of a black hole, there's no way for us to know what will happen once it's occurred. When you go through a black hole, scientists and experts have no idea what happens next, because the laws of physics don't apply. And because we don't understand what happens next, this means that the potential of what happens within a black hole is completely outside of the bounds of human thinking. And the same thing is happening with AI. Once it reaches singularity, the possibilities are limitless. It can mean the beginning of a new utopia or the destruction of society itself. At least because we try to kick it to us, Man, no, AI would never do that. Nigga, we can't even comprehend what it would do. And you trying to tell me what, well, you just trying to get up at. Did y'all see, I forgot who it was, bro. I was trying to think. I don't know who it was, but I saw a video not too long ago. It was uh, like, it was like a robot. It could talk like a human. It could move, like it picked up an apple. It was insane. Like nigga, y'all. The world, like, I feel like we just got technology, like, 20, 20 years ago, for real, for real, like, I'm talking about high tech, like, oh, cell phone, ring, ring, like, I could carry it around, but we got robots now, we finna have flying cars, but this shit is electric cars, bro, like, see. Bro, it's getting crazy, y'all. But even though the breakneck pace of AI research means that this will happen very soon, there's still the question of how we use AI in this interim mm. period. AI is already becoming as smart as the smartest people. ChatGPT's estimated verbal IQ stands at 155, higher than 99.9% .9 of people, with Einstein and Stephen Hawking's being around 160. Damn. And that's just a few years into this development. With accelerating progress, AI will outpace all of us in years, if not months. And of course, IQ doesn't equal intelligence. Damn. AI still lacks self-awareness, experience, and other essential components of a mind. Yeah. But even the way we use AI's singular abilities for pattern recognition and other skills will decide what the next decades look like. In a very interesting podcast with Mo Gatwatt on the Diary of a CEO, he mentions that AI will talk in a way that we just can't comprehend. If something is 10x Einstein, uh, we will have no idea what it's talking about. This is just around the corner. It could My be a few God. miles away. Like Einstein talking about relativity to the lowest IQ person in humanity, this lowest IQ person just won't understand anything. Why did you put my nigga be the juice? <laughs> Are you? In, why did you put this nigga for the lowest IQ? This is insane. I ain't gonna lie, this is, is talking about. This is and great. the same with the AI we talk great. to the smartest of humans. We just won't be able to comprehend what the hell is talking about. But there's another important point here. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, okay. we've been in the process of making old jobs obsolete. In 1900 in Western Europe, 38% of all jobs were in agriculture and other industries of extraction. Jobs related to things like mining or fishing. Hundred okay. years later, and this has fell down to just 3%. What? Other jobs replaced them, mostly in industry than in services. But this next generation of machines is different. Bro, listen, bro, go watch this movie, yo. Go watch this movie, bro. Listen, I, every time I see some bullshit, bro, 
I tell my girlfriend, bro, I be like, bro, it's like this, it's like our robot, man. It's our, it's our robot. Different because there's nowhere else for us to Look go. What will become AI researchers, especially seeing as AI is really AI AI turn on coding humans. than us. Maybe some new career paths will we're open fucked. up, but there's no sign of it so far. Instead, we're going to face two big problems. What? The first is practical. How do we actually deal with all of the people out of work? And the second problem goes so much deeper. It's the question that Wally is asking us. How do we find meaning once we've been replaced? And Wally's about to find out how humanity has been dealing with this exact problem. What? As Wally chases after Reeve, he's suddenly thrust into the world of the Axiom. At first, the only other things he can see are robots, all moving and working in unison to keep the ship running. But then he finds the first person we've seen so far. Morbidly obese and reduced to having a chair move for him, the man is completely occupied by a holographic screen projected in front of his face. He's talking to another person in the same situation, but only through his screen. He's so disconnected from reality that he doesn't even notice they're right next to each other. A few minutes later, when Wally pushes the screen away from the woman's eyes, it's like she's seeing the real world for the first time. And as the film continues, we learn that everyone has been reduced to this state, mindlessly consuming mediocre entertainment, becoming too weak to even eat real food. A Bro, this is crazy, bro. This is, this is like, like, like y'all might think, like, y'all might be thinking I'm joking, I'm, ah, 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 bro, I'm, like, real life, bro, this, this is messing me up, bro. I gotta get off my phone, bro. I gotta go outside. I gotta, I gotta bash in some grass. I gotta go look at a waterfall. I, bro, what? I'm, like, do y'all not understand how quick, do y'all understand what this nigga is saying, bro? This is us, right? Like, 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 I'm, bro, this is me up, yo. This is this is really messing me up. What the? Fuck? What the? F yo, I can't watch TV. What? Take it back, bro. Listen, I need y'all to listen, bro. What he's saying. Like, I don't think y'all really understanding what bro is talking about. All moving and working in unison to keep the ship running. But then he finds the first person we've seen so far. Morbidly obese and reduced to having a chair move for him, the man is completely occupied by a holographic screen projected in front of his face. He's talking to another person Door in the dash, same uh, situation, but only through his screen. He's so disconnected from reality that he doesn't even notice they're right next to each other. A few minutes Face later, time, when Wally pushes the screen away from the woman's eyes, it's Instagram, like she's seeing the real Snapchat. world for the first time. And as the film continues, we learn that everyone has been reduced to this state, mindlessly consuming mediocre entertainment, becoming too weak to even eat real food. A what? double effect of robots catering to every need and the effects of low gravity has turned everyone into a blob. By and large, the corporation that had supplanted society on Earth has completely taken over life itself from the Axiom. Everything is covered in their logos, their corporate announcements decide what's fashionable, and even the babies are taught that by and large is their best friend. Whilst every single one of the needs are met, living like this sucks the meaning out of life because the people on the and the nigga and listen the by and large doesn't care because they are trillionaires my nigga nigga bro they run the train restaurants gas banks car lots they got bro bro this is this is a lot. 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 This is this is this is a lot, bro. I'm thinking about every billionaire right now, bro. I'm thinking about what I want in life. I think about it, like we all chase money, riches, and what are we doing to the world, bro? What y'all? I don't think y'all understanding what this is doing to my mind, bro. Like. The Axiom never need to work to get anything. They don't even need to do anything ever. And this means they're completely shut out from the higher pleasures of life, the ones that require work. It's not only their bodies though. Without higher pleasure and problems to think about, the people of the Axiom have lost their free will. When the AI announcer tells them to change the color of their monochromatic jumpsuits, they do. Their entire sense of self has been replaced with the AI's expectations of their needs. TikTok. And because the AI of the ship is happy to treat them like pampered cattle, that's exactly what they've become. And it's such a chilling vision of the future because it's the exact future that we're going towards. You see, every part of life on the Axiom is completely controlled by AI. 
with what? AI being the puppet of their corporate directives. From the cradle to the grave, people are brought up to depend on consumerism and empty pleasure for everything. That is the purpose of life for these people. They're so immersed in their screens, living parasocially, that it's like they've never seen the world around them, or even had a real conversation with someone authentic. And from the short snippets oh, of dialogue that we man. heard, most of them are miserable. One woman is even complaining that everyone's too vapid and detached, and yet all of them believe the same things, wear the same clothes, and eat the same fattening food. And doesn't this sound familiar? For us, they're a nightmare, but for modern billion dollar businesses, they're the perfect consumers, never questioning, always consuming, and this is the future we're drifting towards. Big tech companies, the loneliness economy, they're selling temporary happiness to us, can't wait for AI to push people out of their jobs, it will leave them with nothing else to do except consume. These aren't problems we're evolved to deal with yet, because there was never a reason for pre-civilization humans to resist the urge to eat their fill or choose the easy option. In fact, taking the path of least resistance was a key trait for natural selection. Anything else was a waste of energy and lowers your survival chances, but today, corporations have taken advantage of our primal psychology to instead entire communities of people into throwing their lives away with meaningless entertainment or stuffing their faces with processed junk. However, this sorry state of affairs didn't- Y'all, think about it, bruh. Think about it. Of course we gonna go with the easy option, bruh. Like, why Why would I do work when I can just scroll on TikTok? Why would I, like, why would I read a book when I go watch a Netflix series? Why would I go out to eat? When I just DoorDash, Uber Eats. Why would I drive when I can just Uber? And at first we gon we gon we gonna be like we gonna come up with like, oh no, nah, it's good because yo, we could just we could just um I, if it's raining, of course you don't wanna go out, blah blah blah. It's just bro, this is crazy, y'all. It's not we're not headed it we're not headed here, nigga. We already living it. Not to this extent, but we are already here. If if one of our favorite influencers, oh y'all, um, these like, I'm just gonna come with a shoe name. These Kupak, the shoes just came out, but we're going hey now everybody gonna start wearing the Ooh, gotcha, um shoes, my nigga. Like like, bro, this shit crazy, bro. Like, bro, bro. It didn't come to pass because of some elaborate AI scheme. The people did it themselves. As Wally and Eve shuttle reaches the captain's quarters, we're about to learn all of the grisly details. As they open the door, it's not the captain that greets them, but another robot, this time in the shape of the ship's wheel. It's Otto, the AI that runs the ship and has supplanted the real human captain. His life is mostly the same as the rest of the passengers, only he gets to wear a uniform and make an announcement every morning. This morning, exactly. he happily tells everyone that the Axum has been in space for 700 years, and that since then, nothing has changed since. That was until today. Eve is the first probe to come back with signs of plant life, and her arrival causes the captain's quarters to lock down and a screen comes to life with a pre-recorded message from the by and large CEO, who evacuated everyone in the first place. He explains that because they found a plant, Earth is now ready to recolonize, and the Axiom can finally come home. The captain's given a manual on what to do, but he's so useless now that he doesn't even know what it is or how to open it. But when Eve is activated and opened up by auto, the plant is gone. Eve immediately assumes Assumes that Wally, who has been watching them from the corner, is responsible. So even Wally gets sent to be cleaned up and repaired, while the captain asks the computer to analyze the dirt that was on Wally. He almost gets bored and gives up halfway through, only going back to listening because he hears the word Earth. It's something that he can actually recognize. As we see the first spark of human curiosity reappear, a lifetime of low pleasure has completely destroyed his attention span. Yeah, this is us, bro. This is, bro, this is us. This is Gen Z already, y'all. Just, just imagine our kids. Bro, I know so many people who don't want to work. And they only focus when it's about money. This is crazy. Bro, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. YouTube, please don't take this video. YouTube, please. Dude, I Everybody need to see this. Everybody. Like, if y'all getting any genuine value from me speaking on what I'm saying or in this video, bro. Make sure you go like his video, comment, subscribe to him. And if you enjoy him, what I'm saying, bro, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, bro. This is insane, y'all. Where, where, where are we headed, yo? Well, clearly, this is where we headed, but like, how do we stop it? Can we stop it? Do we want to? This is crazy.
But he's taken the first step in building it. The world of Axiom represents a dead end for humanity, but even though it seems far away, the AI revolution has started. We're already seeing- right, it, was that, it was that robot, y'all. It was that one right there. It was that one. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back. Hold on. See, but even though it seems far away, uh, the AI revolution has look, started. It was this one. It was this robot I was talking about earlier that was putting up the apples and, and dishes and all that other stuff, right? It. We're already seeing AI systems that are far better and more efficient to their jobs than humans could ever be. In areas obviously suited to the machines, like the closed system of chess, this will happen decades ago. But now, AI is taking its first steps into the real look world. Look at them! And companies are eager to exploit it. In any business with a system of changing variables and a focus on efficiency, AI will always excel. A properly coded AI will outperform any human logistics manager. It will know exactly where everything is and where it's going with pinpoint accuracy. In finance, it's already taken over most risk management, fraud detection, and even the trading itself. Over 60% of trades on Wall Street are now made by algorithms. And once machine learning can outperform those, it will almost instantly replace them. Soon we'll see millions of data entry and customer service roles taken over by AI as well. But it's not just the jobs that revolve around numbers that will get replaced. Self-driving cars are already better than the average human driver. AI is even getting better than humans at predicting human behavior. Rad AI, for example, is a marketing company that's using AI to predict people's personalities and which products would interest them the most. Understanding desire seems like something people would be best at, but Rad AI promises nearly four times the return of traditional marketing. And whether you believe them or not, as AI gets smarter, they will easily surpass our capacity for prediction, especially with things like the metaverse and the Vision Pro taking off, where AI will track your Every, I feel like every minute I gotta follow us, y'all. And I know y'all probably pissed as hell, but I gotta say this. Do y'all think this was all like a, like a move? Like, we gonna dumb these niggas, bro. We gonna dumb them down, bro. We gonna take every, like, we gonna just throw every unnecessary in their face, bro. We gonna throw, let, let's just throw TikTok. Throw TikTok over there. We gonna, we gonna throw TikTok. Oh, now, oh, now they attention span low. Okay, now we're gonna just throw mindless, mindless, mindless media. Oh, look what Drake did today. Oh, y'all, look at, look at Taylor Swift. Oh, look at this. Somebody, somebody just died over here. Oh, look at this. Somebody new just leaked. The average woman that I see on t not on TikTok, but on YouTube, TikTok, well, everywhere to be honest. Um, they, they all talk about how much do you make. Do, do you do this? They don't care about gym connection, bro. Bro, this is every eye movement, everything you interact with, everything that you find interesting, always being tracked by AI algorithms to market you the perfect product. Even here on YouTube, we're watching as AI steamrolls the whole system. Content farms use AI to do the writing, the editing, and even the voiceover now for virtually nothing. With minimal oversight, they're pumping out the videos and raking in the profits. It's a byproduct of AI replacing tons of writing jobs. Sure, it might not be writing best-selling novels anytime soon, but for everything from the back of a cereal box to formulate TV scripts, it'll do just fine. If even with thumbnails, every time you go on YouTube, you'll see another AI thumbnail everywhere. It's so much more efficient and cheaper than any other alternative, and it obviously works with YouTube's AI algorithm. And the sad truth is that most YouTubers and large companies that don't use AI will eventually go extinct, outcompeted by the ones that do. And if AI does get better, or even just slightly worse than people, financially it's always going to be worth it for companies. The same is true for governments as well. The ones that have the best AI will simply outcompete the others. And this gives everyone in power a massive incentive to promote AI research and stay ahead of the curve. And that's why a recent proposal to hold AI research for just six months to get an idea of the risks was universally ignored and swept under the rug. Call to action for governments, I'm saying, tax AI powered businesses at 98%. It's the prisoner's dilemma all over again. Any company that ignores AI or even puts checks and balances on it can't trust the rest of them to do the same. We're already seeing Fortune 500 companies replace their CEOs with AI, and the results are shocking. Every time the CEO is replaced with AI, the business always beats its competitors. And so why wouldn't governments be the same? I mean, it's highly unlikely that China or Russia will ever stop their research, and so the US never will. 80 years ago, the US gave everything it had to rush the developments of the atomic bomb. The scientists knew what they were creating was too destructive to even imagine but they were so afraid Germany would beat them to it and win the war with it, they would continue to press on, never relenting. And we're seeing the exact same thing happen right now, but the results will probably be even more destructive. Mo Gaudat is a man of the vanguard of AI development and its inherent dangers. After quitting his job as the lead engineer for Google's AI development, he's dedicated- This nigga quit. He quit. He quit. He was the lead of the-
dedicated his entire life to warning people about the incoming AI revolution. One thing that he's particularly scared of with AI is his ability to outperform humans in creativity. If you ask ChatGPT to say something that nobody has ever said before, it can and always will. It can create entirely new ideas and works of art. One of the things I said to ChatGTP was, I said, tell me something that's not been said before that's paradoxical but true. And it comes up with these wonderful expressions like, as soon as you call off the search, you'll find the thing you're looking for, like these kind of paradoxical truths. Mm -hmm. And I get, and I then take them and I search them online to see if they've ever been quoted before and they, I can't find them. And it might not be based on those new crit. Poor fucks. We're cooked, my nigga, we're cooked. We're cooked, hey, pack it up, boy, pack it up. Hey, go ahead, get your backpack, suitcase, boy, because we're finna be out of here soon. <laughs> boy, what the, boy, we're doomed. We're doomed. We're doomed. We're doomed. We're cooked. We so cooked. It's not even funny, boy. We so baked. But, she, we might be overcooked, to be honest. Operations on its own experience. It might be biased. Yeah. Instead, it's creating things based on a data set. But at the end of the day, that's the same thing that we do, really. Every new thought is a consequence of merging old ones together. AI is creative, but we're ignoring it and sticking our heads in the sand because if we acknowledge it, then it will slow down development and make us ask ourselves some hard questions. And we're seeing exactly the same thing with AI. Governments and corporations will break all the rules to develop AI better than the other. I mean, they're doing things right now that should never have even been considered. Like teaching AI to code and work on themselves, or like giving AI access to the open internet, and even using AI in weapons technology. One US Air Force colonel recently described a simulated AI missile defense system which they were testing. They had used a simple reward mechanism of giving the AI points for every threat destroyed, but this overriding directive made it ignore explicit orders to hold back, destroying every threat it could identify. Then, when the AI decided that the operator was getting in the way of its orders, it killed them. When they put in a hard rule against killing its superiors, the AI destroyed the communications tower, where the AI was getting its orders from instead. And this was all just a simulation, of course, and the US Air Force later denied that it ever took place. But it was a very worrying sign of things to come. Using AI in this way is sure to lead to disaster. AI will be used to make CEOs richer and give generals better guns and it needs to stop. Meanwhile, millions then billions of people will be left without a job as AI takes over industry after industry, gobbling up the white collar jobs and eventually reaching the blue collar jobs. And according to Mogadat, all of this will take place over the next 15 to 20 years. And it's starting to happen as we speak. And we're gonna need to adopt fast to survive and change the way the world works to even cope with this. Because people Hello! won't be able to find I mean, yeah. jobs anymore. We'll what need do to we find do? New ways to give people a sense we got we gotta make moves, which is already lacking in almost everyone's lives. The risk is that we'll just retreat further into a wally consumerist world. I mean, over reliance on technology today with our social media addiction is turning people into chronic screen watchers what with fried dopamine receptors as they watch another Subway Surfer video with Family Guy clips, all while wasting their entire lives and then wondering why they're depressed. This is what corporations want. These people are the perfect customers for social media and junk food. And with AI, this is only going to get exponentially worse because AI doesn't want this to stop. It will do as it's programmed We're to make people more addicted to its we products, so following whatever orders is given. Bake, it's bro. only the people who will control the AI that will make this a reality. Again, what's the worry? The worry is that if a human is in control, human a human will show very bad behavior yeah. for you know using an AI that's not yet fully developed. Yeah. And it's yet another thing that Wally got completely right. AI's unflinching resolve to carry out orders without even considering if it ever misinterpreted them. As even Wally are brought in for repairs, the other defective robots still fit this mold. The massage bot is still trying to massage other robots, and the painter bot is still trying to paint the floor. They're clearly both sentient and defective, but they're all still trying to carry out their programming. Wally though, after centuries of organic development, is different. When he sees Eve getting repaired, he thinks they're hurting her, and breaks out of the pen they put him in. He breaks into the room she's in, and takes her arm cannon to break her out. But when he shoots, it hits the circuitry controlling the entire repair room. Wally is then carried off by other robots, as Eve follows. But security catches up to them and sounds the alarm. They manage to lose their pursuers and get to the escape shuttles. Eve then tries to get Wally to leave for Earth, but as they do, another robot turns around the corner. They see it's just one of Auto's robots, and is trying to launch the plant into space. Just as Wally goes into the pod to get the plant, the robot that Auto sent closes the airlock and jettisons the pod. It's set to self-destruct, and Wally's almost blown up. 
but he just manages to get out of the pod with the plant. Using a fire extinguisher, he propels himself back through the vacuum of space towards Eve. In one of the most beautiful scenes ever made, Wally and Eve dance through space before making it back onto the ship. Eve leaves Wally alone and manages to get the plant back to the captain, who's been immersing himself in the beauties of our world. But when he sees Eve's recordings of the planet, it's clear that something is terribly wrong with the planet now. But the knowledge that one plant was able What's to survive up, is Manny? clearly hope. That is, until Otto gets involved. After trying and failing to take the plant back, he shows the captain the orders he received centuries ago from the CEO who made the ship. The CEO explains that Wally robots were never going to work and that Earth is completely uninhabitable now. He has given Otto full control of the ship and an explicit order never to return to Earth. These orders override the captains, so Otto doesn't listen to any of the captain's reasonable arguments. Instead, he mutinies, throwing the plant, Wally and Eve into the garbage disposal and locking the captain in his quarters. Otto is possibly one of the best AI villains ever written, because despite his actions, he's not actually malevolent or evil in any way at all. He's just like pretty much every AI on the ship, singularly devoted to his orders. Yeah. When he's fighting against the captain earlier on, and the captain makes him give him the plant, he complies fully. He knows he will make his job a lot harder, but it won't make it impossible, so he does it anyway. He only really disobeys the captain when it explicitly goes against his directive to keep the humans in space. He doesn't want to hurt anyone either, he wants the humans to survive. When he tilts the ship and puts them in danger, it's completely rational considering he believes they won't survive without his order being acted out. And that's the thing, AI is never evil or malicious due to his own designs, and it's likely that it never will be. Otto is the only antagonist because he was given bad orders by the real villain of the film, the CEO who oversaw the ruin of Earth to begin with. It's in this way that Wally warned us years ago about the real dangers of AI. It's not that AI will gain sentience and immediately go forward terminator on us. It's the interim period before AI gains sentience that's important. We don't have control over what it will do once it becomes self-aware, exactly. but we will be the ones to teach it a value system before that time comes. So if we keep using AI for killing each other, for extracting profits and as tools for the rich and powerful, then that is what it will learn. And right now, there's already a massive split between the people who have the power to guide this future and the responsibility oh they have God. to use. The Zuckerbergs and Sam Oldmans oh in the so world God. have proven themselves to be one of the worst people to control this. Every day we watch their infighting, power, greed, hoarding of wealth, Stop, and their disregard bro. for everyone else. How much money do y'all need, bro? How much money y'all think y'all need, bro? How much money do y'all need, bro? Stop, bro, please. God, bro, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Bro, like. Right. Like, this is gonna be the most real I've ever been on the video, bro. Bro. How, bro, how much money do y'all need, bro? What are y'all going for, bro? You can only get so much money in this life, bro. Like, like what is y'all niggas trying to do? Like, like, y'all trying to be the richest person on earth for what? Bro, you, you gonna die and then, then what? Bro, stop being so greedy for money here. It don't make sense, bro. You like you want to say you got more than somebody for what? Okay, once you got it more than I, right, what? What's the point, bro? We're we're done. Microsoft, meantime, has laid off its AI ethics and society team. The team was responsible for ensuring the company's AI innovations are both ethical and sustainable. And even if it's not Altman, it's the CEOs of Microsoft. It's the people who see the potential profits rather than the complete devastation to humanity. And we shouldn't fear AI's intelligence. We should we fear our stupidity. Just like in Wally, -E, when the AIs do finally wake up, we can only hope that they'll be smart enough to ignore our orders to kill or exploit. But before then, we need to tax the hell out of AI companies. We need to regulate them, giving our harsh punishments to the companies that break these rules. Right. And this needs to be done internationally. But this is kind of a false dream. Even though it would be amazing to see justice for the CEOs and executives and governments pushing the boundaries, risking everyone's future with malevolent AI, it likely will never happen. Because these are the people who run our world. And yet if we don't do this immediately, then Wally represents a best case scenario for humanity in the future. Cutting back to the movie, best we see scenario. both of the main characters have been lost in the massive waste disposal system. Wally and Eve nearly get compacted and thrown out of the airlock, only getting saved by a cleaner robot that's been following Wally's grimy tire tracks. Earth's pollution and dirtiness actually ends up saving humanity in a roundabout way. With everyone living like the perfect consumers, there's a bunch of trash. 
departs from Wally Robots on Earth. However, motivated more by her bond with Wally than by her directive, Eve sets out to finally get the plant back to the captain. Teaming up with the defective robots, they get the captain's attention and reignite his hope. He manages to get a message out to Eve, telling her to get the plant to the main deck. Then the captain pushes the button to initiate the trip home. All the humans get lined up on the main deck, and a pedestal emerges from the ground for the plant. Once they get the plant there, the trip home will begin. Now obviously Otto isn't going to let all of this happen, so after a fight with the captain, he goes as far as tilting the ship to make enough chaos to stop Wally and Eve, and it almost works. Wally is left barely holding the pedestal up, whilst Eve has to save the people on the ship. And so now it's all down to the captain, who takes the first steps anyone's taken for centuries. He walks up to Otto, overpowers him, and just turns him off. As the light fades from Otto's red eye, the captain spins the wheel and the ship rights itself again. Wally's nearly being completely crushed by the pedestal though. He's on his last legs. Even when they get the plant to the pedestal and it releases him, he's in a very bad condition. But fortunately for humanity, they can finally go home. The ship takes them back to Earth, and as it lands, Eve desperately takes Wally to get repaired. At first, it's unclear whether he'll make it. Then when he does wake up, it seems like he's gone back to his factory settings. But a tiny bit of static in Eve's embrace, finally pulls them together. Humanity has been left to recolonize and clean up the world, whilst Eve and Wally can live together forever. Now despite his warnings of a grim future for all of us, Wally is somehow optimistic in his hopes for humanity, as AI could bring us to a new golden age. However, as Wally shows, it could really wipe out millennia of progress and civilization. And the amount of pressure we put on the people in power to safely control it, is the only thing that will actually decide which future we live through. Ever wondered why you have no purpose? Why none of your friends have any motivation? Why our generation has lost all passion for life? This isn't an accident. It's all part of a process called the swamping effect. You see, when the average short attention span person is flooded with a daily stream of endless information, people slide into a passively numbed mental state. And when this happens, you become easily fooled into believing anything you're told. It's why there's no soul or passion or authenticity left in our culture, and it's why our society is dying. But there is a solution to this, and many of the other problems plaguing you living in our current culture. And I'm not just talking about modern day BS solutions, I'm talking about a new form of community, a way for us to take back control of our lives. With my new newsletter, I will go deep into the real solutions and answers, the value systems of thousands of philosophers condensed into an easy to understand package to help you improve your life, all at no cost to you. And if you're interested in this, where I go into far more depth about the solutions to the problems we discuss, just click the link in the description below. We've already published multiple essays so far, and there's so many more to come in the near future. So if you're interested, sign up for free by clicking the link here. Shout out to you, bro. Amazing video, W video. Definitely woke my eyes up. Definitely woke me up. Um. Wow. Wow. I'm speechless, scared, nervous, um, a lot, bro. Like, what are we going to do to change, like, our trajectory? And do we want to? Like, do we, like, do we have enough weird, like, I feel like, yes, like, yes, like, we do, but are we willing to? Are we actually going to do something about it to make it, to see and to make a change, bro? Bro, y'all leave your comments and, and your thoughts down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you go like his video and like this video and share, subscribe. And I love y'all. Stay safe. And um, I'm going to leave it on this. Um, look at the camera. Man, let's change, bro. Let's, like, let's not be slaves to our phones and to, like, technology. Like, let's get out the house and, and like, experience life. Like I know, I know we all need money to survive, bro. But that's that's not the main reason why we here on this earth. And I feel like that's what some most of us do. Like we make money our purpose, and it really isn't. Cause like if we if that is our purpose, then it's it's really a sad, pointless purpose because they always printing more. So are you forever gonna chase money into you laying in your into you laying into your coffin, bro? I love y'all, for real. And if y'all made it to the end of this video, I hope you gain something, a new perspective, and a new um, outlook on life. I love y'all. Stay safe, and we out. Ugh.